Okay, let's look at an example of two, we're comparing basically two group means. Um, and it's very important that we understand these are two independent means. And independent just means that they're not related. You're not looking at, let's say, pre and post scores on a bunch of students, you know, and, and so you would take the average of the pre and the average of the post, but those two groups of scores are dependent on each other because they came from the same student being tested over and over again. Or you could look at things that were dependent because there was a natural relationship between the two groups. So, for instance, you could look at IQs of uh, people and their spouse. So you have a paired uh, data that way, right? Because you have an IQ score of one person and then you have an IQ score of their spouse. And even though you can do now the average of one group and the average of the other group, each of those pairings have a logical tie, right? Their spouses. Um, you could do the same thing with siblings and, you know, look at pairs of siblings. And again, there's a logical connection between those. And so those are considered dependent. But in this example, uh, it's independent. It's, it's very obvious that it's independent. We're looking at two groups of objects. In this case, we're looking at men and women. And we're asking the question, do men talk less than women? It's one of those age-old sexist questions, right? But statisticians like to take the politics out of it and just look at the numbers. So here are the resulting statistics, the simple statistics, right, based on uh, two fairly decent-sized samples, 186 and 210, right? That's our N, that's our sample size. For the men, they had an average of 15,000 and change, right? Just almost 17,000, um, sorry, almost 16,000 words a day. Uh, and then women had a little bit over 16,000 words per day on average spoken, right? Um, and then, first of all, how did they calculate that? Who walks around with a counter every day and counts every word? They, but anyways, uh, and then the, the next number is the standard deviation. So these are the standard deviations of the samples, right? We noticed that they're not Greek letters, so these aren't standard deviations of the populations, and we didn't use a Greek letter for the mean, right? We don't have a mu there, so that's not the, the mean of the entire population. These are sample statistics. These are statistics done on your two samples of men and women. So you have to ask yourself, okay, how am I going to tackle this question? I, I realize I've got two sets of data, and I want to compare those two group means, and I know there are different ways to do this. The first question is, is are they independent? Are they dependent? Because if they're dependent, we're going to go down a totally different path. And you go, no, these are independent. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, do I know sigma 1 and sigma 2, i.e., do I know the standard deviation of the population's that these are coming from. And that would mean you would have to know the standard deviation of you know, words spoken per day by all men or all women in your population. And if you're trying to generalize this to, let's say, just say only all men and women in the United States, then you'd need to know that for all women and men in the United States. But if you were trying to generalize it across the entire planet, then you would need to know the standard deviation of words spoken by all men on the entire planet and all women. And you can see that that's you know, very, you know, improbable. It almost never happens. So we've got this little decision tree over here on the right that helps us decide which statistics we're going to run. And if we know both standard deviations, then of course we're going to use the normal distribution. But this case is almost never true in reality, right? This is a teaching tool. You'll you'll have some examples in your academic career where you're, you'll quote unquote, know the standard deviations of your populations and you'll use the normal distribution. But that's really just a teaching tool because it really almost never happens in the real world that you know the standard deviations of your two populations. So when in doubt, always say no to this first one and go, no, I don't think we know that. So instead, we ask ourselves, can we assume that the standard deviations of the two uh, populations are the same? Because if they are, uh, then we'll want to pool our standard error. I mean, we'll still use the t-distribution because we have to use that because we, we don't know the standard deviations of our populations. But we can go ahead and pool the standard error. We're, we basically pool together all of those standard deviations and get one big standard deviation for the whole group. Now, this is a tricky thing. Um, a lot of statisticians recommend against doing this, and, and I'm one of those because it's really a a pretty big assumption to make that the two standard deviations are the same. Because remember, we already came off that first diamond saying, no, we don't know what those two standard deviations are, but now I'm going to turn around and assume that they're the same. That's not a good assumption to make. 
So I would avoid doing that again, unless you're told to by whatever, you know, question you're doing or, you know, class you're in. Now, if we look at our, so we're in our third one, we're down here and we're going, all right, so this means we're doing this approach, which is kind of the standard approach, right? Whenever we're doing the difference of two group means, we're going to do a T distribution and we're going to treat the standard deviation separately. And we're going to use that standard error. Now, if we look at our data, we can see that the two standard deviations are they're close, but they're really not the same. So you can see that it wouldn't be good to assume that they're the same. Now, before we jump into the calculations, I want you guys to take a second and look at this data and ask yourself, what do you think the answer would be? You know, you should have a general sense of what these things are. We're basically asking the question, are these two groups statistically, right, significantly different? Well, we have relatively similar sample sizes, right? 186 and 210. And then we have relatively similar means. I mean, 15,668 and a half versus 16,215. Yes, that's a difference of about 600. But it's a difference of 600 when your standard deviations are both over 7,000, right? You got 7,301.2 and then 8632.5. Those are big standard deviations. So those two means are you know, a fraction of a standard deviation away from each other. So are they going to be statistically different? And you should all be screaming at your video screens going, no, right? We know right off the bat that the answer to this is going to be, um, we're going to um, fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? Because the null hypothesis is going to be that they're the same. So let's jump in, right? The null hypothesis, as we just stated, because the null is always no change, right? So the null is always that mu1 equals mu2. And which one's going to be 1, which one's going to be 2? Does not matter at all. I'm going to let this group be 1 and this group be 2 only because it's numerical from left to right. There's no, you know, it's not like I'm saying men are 1 and women are 2. And then the alternative based on um, the claim, right, where the claim is that the mean numbers of words spoken in a day by men is less than that for women. So that would mean the average of the men group is less than the average of the female group. We also could have just asked the question, are they different, right? And then our alternative, would, or are they the same, right? And then our either one, are they different or are the same, results in the same alternative of not equals. Okay, now we need to compute some things. And if we're going to do it by hand, the the, um, the the t the, the t critical that we have to compute is actually fairly simple. It's not that bad, and it's very similar to all of these uh, test statistics we've seen in a lot of these hypothesis testing. Because um, if you remember the original one, it was um, x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Well, now we just have x1 mean minus x2 mean. So we're looking at the difference of the means minus the hypothesized difference, the null hypothesized difference. And remember, because our null is that they're equal, this second piece is always just going to be 0. Right? It's just going to equal 0. So we're just going to be left with the difference of the means divided by some form of a standard deviation, right? a standard error what we call it. And in this case, we're using this formula over here of S squared. So the variance of our first group over its uh, sample size, and then the variance of the second group over its sample size. Plug everything in. It's very simple uh, computations. You guys should be able to do this pretty much in your sleep and spit out a test statistic of negative 0 0.676 if we round to three decimals. Now, if we um, want to do this in technology, it's just as easy. In our graphing calculators, we go back into our stat and then our tests, right? We're doing a two sample t-test. Right, because we got two samples, so we gotta go two sample t-test, and then 
if we choose data, that's where we'd put the raw data into two lists, but we don't have that. I, we, we did, but I, I did the data for you, right? I did the analysis for you and gave you um, the actual stats. And then we go down here and we fill everything in. So X bar one, right? That's just the mean of the first one, the standard deviation, and the sample size. Repeat the process for the second um, group. And then the last thing is to make sure you have the uh, correct alternative hypothesis. And because, again, we let men be group one and women be group uh, two, then we're asking that group one is less than group two. And if you put these in a different order, right, if you put women in as group one and men as group two, then you would just choose the option of it being greater than group two, right, because everything would, the, they'd switch places. All right. So now it asks, do we pool our variances? Uh, and you should always choose no, right, unless told different, like you have some sort of uh, special homework question that they tell you to pool your variances. Never, never pull your variances, right? I really think that's a bad thing to assume. And then we just calculate. Here's our test statistic. You see negative 0.67, round 676. Here's our p-value, right? Here's the associated p-value with that. And we can see that we're let, like we said when we were just looking at these, we're less than, these two things are less than one center deviation away from each other. And our t-statistic is less than one center deviation, right? That's basically what these things are. They're, they're like z-scores. But now they're t-scores, right? We're just on a different curve, but it's the same concept of the z-score. So we're less than one standard deviation away. So that gives us a, a big p-value, right? To almost 25%. And then it gives us a bunch of other stuff that we don't care about, degrees of freedom and things that we would use for other computations. But we would, there's our, our test statistic. We could go and get our t, uh, sorry, there, we could go get our t-critical, which is, um, you know, based on a 0.01 significance level and based on our degrees of freedom. 364.26, right? So if we had to actually find that that uh, critical value, that's what we would use that for. And we would see that ours is not outside of it, right? So it's not out in the critical region, and we would fail to reject. Very simple, easy stuff. In StatCrunch, it's just as easy. Stat, we're dealing with the T-curve, so we're doing T-stats. T we have a two-sample. Paired would be if we have um, dependent. So if we were back in that case of dependent means, but we don't, we have two independent, so we do two sample. With data would be if we had the raw data. We don't, we have the summary. And then we're just putting in the same exact information we put in to the calculator. We're doing a hypothesis test. The null is that they're the same, which is the same thing as their difference being zero. And then the alternative, right, if one, remember, males are supposed to be less than women, so one is supposed to be smaller than two. So if we do one minus two, that would give us a negative number, right? Less than. Compute. And you can see that we get relatively the same T stat. It's a little bit different, right? And there's our P value. Now you might be wondering, um, why are the di why are the, the two results slightly different? Why are the degrees of freedom 394 and over here it's 364? Why is my T stat uh, point six right negative 0 0.682? This is 676. My p value th they're all off by a little bit, and some of you may have caught it when you were watching me go through the options. So let me go back and show you what the problem is. And this is the, the biggest mistake with um, StatCrunch is right here. It defaults to pooling the variances. So every time you do a two sample uh, T in StatCrunch, you have to remove the pool variances tick mark. Otherwise, it assumes the variances are the same, which is a stupid thing to assume. So they really need to change that, but until they do, keep an eye on that. Now if we compute it, you'll see that our results are the same. So now we're back to the same numbers. Right, I'll put them right here. You see exactly the same out to the decimal, even our degrees of freedom. 
Okay, so the number one thing you guys are going to forget and make a mistake if you're using stack crunch is you'll forget to unpool the variances. So it defaults, it puts a little tick mark there, which is a bad, 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 bad thing. So always take that off again, unless you're doing a question for homework or something that tells you to assume uh, to pool the variances, which we don't normally do in the real world. All right, that should be everything you guys need to know to be able to tackle these types of questions. Hope that helps.